the last 30 years, I don't know how many murders I've done, probably over 100. Investigated, I think. Investigated you... over, yeah, <laughs> yes, thank you. Right. It's a, it's, yeah. a, it's a good clarification. Right. Yes, right. The more you investigate something, a crime, the more it becomes crystal clear what happened. I don't think any other crime that I know of in history has been investigated with the kind of intensity that this has. And yet, I don't think we get any closer to knowing what happened now than we were you know, 40, 45 years ago. I'd been thinking about November 22nd again. The phrase tectonic shift kept coming to me. And I kept thinking about December 7th, 1941. And about 9-11. Of course, 9-11, we're all there glued to our TV. But November 22nd was different. There was no why. Friday afternoon, the why is that there's some Marxist sympathizer nutcase in Dallas, of all places, who decided to shoot the president. And then Sunday, that nutcase is off on national television. What was different about November 22nd and the tectonic shift that occurred there it was right from the beginning. We couldn't put a, a why answer on it. It seemed to be beyond that. This case has become so cliched, it seems to me. I mean, with conspiracy theories here, conspiracy theories there, etc. And what I'm struggling with is this. I know this happened one way rather than another. It had to happen one way, right? If you could get inside the photos, you would know what happened. There were somewhere between 20 and 30 photographers actually taking film, movie film, or still photos in Dealey Plaza that day. The film evidence actually makes it possible to lay out a reasonably precise scenario as to what happened. That's really the problem for the authorized account. You want evidence that's authentic in the Kennedy assassination? I'll tell you where to find it. Go to the films and photos of Dealey Plaza, the most obvious place. Yeah, it's all authentic because it authenticates itself. For example, Mary Muchmore is taking eight millimeter movie film, not from the Zapruder side, from the other side. It gets shown on TV in New York, where an FBI agent sees it. Says, oh, the Bureau doesn't know anything about this film. Could we get a copy? Orville Nix took eight millimeter movie film of the assassination, of the shooting, from the center of Dealey Plaza. Uh, standing on the corner of uh, Maine and Houston. They're taking pictures before the assassination and during the assassination. He didn't think much of it. He had a lot of film left. So he just left the film in his camera and went off. He photographed a high school football game the next weekend. Mary Mormon and Jean Hill, good looking girls, they go there to take <laughs> Polaroid shots of motorcycle cops. 
she snaps a Polaroid photograph which shows the grassy knoll area at Zapruder frame 315. Now Kennedy's hit in the head at 313 within two eighteenths of a second of him getting hit. So having my picture I, when I took it was at the same instant that the president was hit. And that does show in my picture. They get interrogated by Dallas County deputies. One of the deputies takes her photograph and takes a photograph of the photograph. And that's on the AP wire within two hours. The beauty of all this is, look, none of this stuff is controlled by the government. It's pristine, as it were. It's a great source of evidence. No one was interested in the photographic evidence except for the news media. Right. Magazines had to show something. The authorities didn't see them as evidence. I think it's too strong to say that they didn't see it as, as evidence. I think that's too, too strong. But they weren't, they weren't very, how to put it, they weren't very enthusiastic. Let's talk about Forrest Sorrells, the resident Secret Service agent in Dallas. Everybody in Dealey Plaza, they saw Zapruder and Marilyn Sitzman standing on this pedestal with a movie camera, right? Forrest Sorrells arrives on the scene rather quickly, goes up to Zapruder's office, we're now talking maybe 20 minutes or so, and hooks on to Zapruder. By 2.30 or 3 o'clock in the afternoon, Forrest Sorrells has seen this film. And it's the film of films of the assassination, right? Zapruder had promised him that he would give him a copy. Zapruder goes, makes the copies, gets three copies made. And now where's Sorrells? Well, they heard he was down in the Dallas police headquarters. It's now 7.30 at night. And Sorrells is there, yeah, but sorry, I'm busy. Drop the film off at the office. Meanwhile, Patsy Swank is trying to get to Zapruder for Life magazine, right? Dick Stolley, the LA bureau chief, has flown in from, from LA. And man, they are on Zapruder's tail, calling him and calling him and calling him. Finally, at 11 o'clock that night, Stolley reaches Zapruder. Zapruder says, I've had it. <laughs> This has been a rather long day for me, right? So I'm going to bed, <laughs> but I'll see you tomorrow morning. So Stolly shows up. Somehow, Stolly managed to persuade Zapruder that Life magazine was it. So Stolly walks out of that office with the original, not a copy, folks, with the original of the Zapruder film in his pocket immediately then has it couriered to Chicago, where Life magazine has moved an editorial team, where they've thrown away the cover with Roger Staubach on it. Now it's going to be Kennedy on the cover. And they're going to get that Zapruder film in it. And they did it. One of the Life editors writes the commentary, and I believe says, and at a certain point, Kennedy turned around and took a, sh a shot in the throat from the sixth floor window. This is really screwed up, right? Life magazine has used the Zapruder film simply to illustrate the probity of the official story. Period. It undermines the official story. Over the last 15 years, various people have claimed that the Zapruder film has been altered. And, uh, <laughs> and then the problem is, you point out that the Zapruder film matches the Nick's film, matches the Much More film, matches this film and that film. Uh, they're all altered, see? They're all altered. But that's absolute nonsense. I mean, they weren't all altered. None of them were altered. 
And that's what this collection of photo evidence provides. It provides not only precision in terms of the scenario that you can put together, right? But it provides a self-authenticating evidentiary basis. Fifty years have transpired without anybody being able to get an answer to what happened there. There is an only ever has been, it seems to me, one threshold question. It's the only question in the case from the very beginning. Was somebody shooting from up there? Up front? Up to the right front? Up there in the knoll area? Was somebody shooting from up there? If shots came from more than one direction, then there is no doubt in my mind there was a conspiracy. It's been that simple since back in the 60s, and it's still there. If that can't be known, and I'm not talking about believed or believed with a fair degree of probability, right? But pretty much known, then this case is going to go into history exactly the way it is now, which is a real mess. If you go out to Dealey Plaza, you would find sort of quintessential American family. They would pick up a leaf or a twig, a piece of grass or something. The reason they'd pick something up was it came from there. It's a place where, where something, something significant and mysterious and dark had happened. It was almost into a kind of mythic, extraordinary sort of killing ground in which the young prince or the king was murdered. People continue to go there to think they can figure it out. Maybe you can't. I don't know.